and we should be live hi everyone it has been a while uh, let me check here <clears throat> let's see if we get some people so this will be a very relaxed live stream but i want to talk about uh, public speaking developers uh, and so on let's see if the audio is correct I'm trying this with StreamYard because I think it's easier to highlight the questions of people. <clears throat> let's see. Let's see if we get someone. I didn't give much uh, anticipation of this. I didn't. I didn't do much promotion. Let's see if we get some people anyway. Okay. So <clears throat> we go here and let's go on the live stream. Let's see if we get someone. Okay, we get someone. Hey, Kurt, nice, nice, nice. So, this is a live stream 100% to ask to do it. What? Sorry. Okay, nice. Muted. Glad to be here today. Nice, nice. So, I haven't done a live stream like this for a while because because I focused on just. Uh, putting out uh, edited videos, but it has been uh, 10 days without any live stream uh, and also more time for... Uh... <laughs> Hi, everyone. I see also some people from LinkedIn. Feel free to ask any question about uh, public speaking and developers. I think this is a great, uh, a great topic. Nice. <clears throat> okay, so... <clears throat> So the main reason why I'm doing I'm doing this is because I'm just back from the We Are Developers conference. The language is still here, and I want to still use this uh, Sunday to talk about some hot impressions and uh, something that might be useful, especially if you want to try public speaking or you want to improve. I started as a public speaker around one year ago. And now I've done, uh, I think, 12, maybe more, 12 conferences where I've been a speaker. It's way more conferences, but as a speaker, I think it's uh, it's the 12 to 1. I should, I should count them, but uh, it. So just confirm that you can actually hear me and the audio is OK. It's very hot in Italy today, so I also the a fan there. I don't know if you can, if you <laughs> hear the noise, I'm gonna turn it off. But you should not hear the noise. Nice, nice. So, Arvind, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. I should go for a run. So after this live stream, probably I'll also go for a run. But I really, 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 really wanted to come to come back on online streaming. So. Nice, you can hear me. Perfect. So I'm here. You see, I'm not sharing my screen. No GitHub repositories. I'm not coding today. I'm just here for you 100%. If you want, you can ask me literally anything. And I can also take some parts of the this whole video and maybe make some shorts. So you can just drop whatever you want 100%. Nice. <clears throat> Let's start with this one by Subrajit Maha Maharana. Do you follow any structure for your talk? Yes, I do. So usually I prepare the talk in three main parts. There is an introduction with also maybe the agenda or the goal. Then there is a conclusion with also some uh, um, takeaways uh, and the final uh, slide where I put the thank you, my introduction, my links, uh, my call to action to maybe people follow me. And then there is the part in the middle, let's say the meat, the main uh, meal. So this is the very initial structure. So three parts, beginning, conclusion, and end. So this is how I start. I start creating a doc, and then I start writing. So my presentation usually starts not with slides, but with a document. So document that I just write. Right, like, as a, like an article. Then I uh, uh, read it, and since the beginning, I, I see how much time does it take. So I use the any clock, the phone, or whatever, and I want to see how much how much 
how long does it take for me to read this? And when I reach the, the time needed for the conference, I'm happy and then I start creating slides. Great question. So you can drop all the questions you want for public speaking. <clears throat> nice, nice. Let's see, let's see. We need to make some noise. If you want, if you share this event and you tag me, I will reshare it. So on Twitter, on LinkedIn, I'm doing this event 100% for free. So if you want to help more people, just share this video. There is no paid, there is no paid course. I don't get, there is no <laughs> anything strange behind this. It's just me that I want to, to help and uh, with this. So, so that's it. I'm gonna check now the Twitter account and, uh, and, the, and the LinkedIn, of course. I'm live both on YouTube and LinkedIn. I've also got some questions from LinkedIn, but I'm going to share it, <clears throat> share it. <clears throat> Okay, live. Okay. So, how are you? How are you? How's it going? Live. Let's see if we get some people today. Okay. That's it. Reading from India. I see many people from LinkedIn. This is very, very nice. Mm -mm -mm. Now, okay. I can also share this on LinkedIn. I see many people are in the LinkedIn event. So I'm currently live both on YouTube and LinkedIn because uh, it's cool. <laughs> okay. Okay, nice. Perfect. So. Again, I, so I've been uh, at the We Are Developers conference in Berlin. It has been a mind-blowing experience. The room was for 37 hundreds of people. <laughs> Not joking. The room was more than half full. So I think had more than 2,000 people, uh, 2,500 people. They were at my talk, which is uh, absolutely mind-blowing. <clears throat> Nice, nice. We have many questions. I'm happy. I'm happy. So this made me uh, my uh, my last my I live stream idea already uh, a good one. In physical events, how do you engage the audience? I was a speaker at a small event a few days ago, and the crowd was a bit bored. Okay, so this is an issue because tech is boring. <laughs> Creating a Docker Compose file is probably one of the most boring tasks ever. So. How do you, how can you uh, break this uh, this this boredom? Um, I think the best would be to try to put something at the beginning of your talk. It can be a joke. For example, I I joked about like I am Francesco and uh, I am very active on X <laughs> instead of Twitter. So it's just anything just to wake up. The public, the public. I'm not, uh, and I'm here giving not like I'm not an, an actor. I'm not. I don't know how to engage people. It's not my job. My job is to code and uh, create content. So I'm more focused on that, of course. And uh, so my, the tips I give are literally doable by everyone. So anything rather than just doing nothing and just starting straight into the presentation. So. So yes, and by the way, and, and by the way, it's uh, it's understandable. I think that uh, you can say the same things, but uh, a bit more engaged. So if you are talking about something, try to speak passionate about that. Like, uh, for example, <clears throat> now I want to I want to like would like to talk to you about the amazing introductions and the amazing and amazing things that happened in the docker ecosystem in 2023 Do docker has been around since 2013 so 10 years of docker so much story about this community let's dive in instead of just okay this is what uh, happened in docker in 2023 so it's the same message but you are just uh, adding something like because Probably if you're talking about something, you are passionate about that topic. So you should transmit your passion. So this is what I will do. 
Hey, Madhu. Okay, Maximiliano. Uh, I, hi, Fran. How do you manage internally and externally when there is uh, nice words for you, but most important when these words are not nice? You know your motivation and how do you feel? Okay. So let's start from the bad, bad uh, uh, comments, let's say. So usually when you get a bad comment, or rather if this is on YouTube or in real life, it's, uh, it's always a good sign. And I'll explain you why. If you get a, good, a bad comment, this does mean that your message is going through someone who is new. Because if we you just stay in your comfort zone, you, you get what you I call the grammar of feedback. Like, Francesco, you're amazing. Like, I think Madhu will support me <laughs> even if I do something bad because we are friends and she, she wants to support me and it's okay. If I do something out of my network, I can meet maybe you or maybe someone who doesn't know me. I say, oh, Francesco, who is this, this, this Italian guy? It's so bad accent and saying so wrong things. But this does mean that you are expanding your network. You are expanding the people we are talking to. So having bad comments is usually a good sign that you are improving and you are out of your comfort zone. And uh, I usually start by thinking that everybody can have a bad day. And I don't know. So probably they are basically throwing their frustration on you. So this is my basic assumption. Now, this and usually 99% of the times it's not about you, Francesco, but maybe they don't like the idea. I don't know. They work with that framework and they got fired. So it's not about you as a person, but they are they are against uh, that idea or maybe something that you are sharing. So usually I start from this assumption. And uh, uh, nice words, I think they are always welcome, <laughs> but uh, of course uh, there should be a limit, you know, in this. But uh, I think that when we decide to do anything which is public, we should be prepared to this in some in some ways. So we should I'll try to put the microphone a bit closer. Is it better? I'm trying to I'll try to put on a different way. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's this is a generic thing. So usually, usually, if you think about uh, some rock stars or think about someone who is very famous, I'm not Justin Bieber, some, they have uh, hating, <laughs> hate, um, hate fans, like hate groups, because they are so famous that they are attracting something. They are attracting something bad. I don't know why. Probably most of the people probably they are jealous. Or so it's a good sign, of course. We should uh, uh, understand case by case, I think, uh, but this does mean that you are growing. It's a sign that you are growing because uh, if you just uh, make uh, something for your grandma, you'll always have good, feed good feedback. But this is not maybe what we want. Okay, nice. <clears throat> nice, nice. Many people, many people here. Hi, hi, hi. You also have Pradumna from uh, from Twitch. Amazing. <laughs> uh, and it's nice that on streamer that can show comments from different platforms. So on uh, uh, YouTube, uh, uh, LinkedIn and um, Twitch. So let's see here. Hey, hey everyone. What is the future of front end development in, in long term? Is AI doing amazing things? Okay, I made a presentation about AI two days ago. AI is uh, intended as a tool, especially front end is very complicated. I'm no more of a DevOps guy, but front end is very complicated, and AI can really help you in creating cool stuff. So we should really focus on solving the problems instead of playing on the small CSS. We should try to have a, a bigger picture of this and use this AI ChatGPT as support for our work. This is what I think. It's uh, it's not about to disappear, but uh, it's, it's a great support. We have many questions from LinkedIn. I like it. <clears throat> What techniques do you use to engage a live audience? Amazing. So the best would be to have uh, not the generic jokes, but programming jokes. So tech related jokes. So like JavaScript is bad, HTML is a programming language uh, or, or all these like stereotypes. So something specific for developers. And you know, jokes are always the same. It's all about how, how 
we will tell them. You can have the same joke, but told by two different people. <laughs> one can make them laugh and one not. So that another technique is um, amazing technique is to ask people things. Like how many of you have ever heard about you know, Remix ID? How many of you have ever tried Docker? How many of you know Daily Dev? So this has two effects. The first one is that you understand the level of your audience, which is amazing. And the second one is that people are engaged. They say, oh, maybe, I, yeah, I know that. So it stimulates uh, curiosity in the, in the people. So, so this is what, what uh, I will do. Yes. It doesn't have too many. So this should be just breaks. So not continuous jokes. Otherwise, people say, OK, so this is just uh, too fun. But uh, like, I don't know, I think I have every five uh, Five minutes, uh, usually I drop one. How do you stay confident during long term speaking and on stage? So usually the, the issues are just at the beginning, at the beginning of a presentation. Uh, so how do you stay confident? I think you are confident if you really believe what you are saying. Like I did this presentation and I have my conclusions. So usually the conclusions, of course, they are at the end. So you should believe what you say. I should not say, I would not say random things. They should be your honest thoughts and you should uh, tell them, not like repeating them. I was also very bad at memory, so I, I could never do this. So staying confident, I think that, I think the best way is to speak slowly and with poses. So once you, I, I have this way of, of talking where, that I use, for example, during a conclusion, I don't, I don't talk like this, like, okay, now I have this and now I have this, uh, because people want to, to listen to a slow pace. Like, I really understand, I really think that this will be the future of programming. So having the control of what you are saying, this also helps you breathing. <clears throat> In live programming, is it better to have every detail solved? I think that what, okay, so this is more, this is not related to public speaking, but I want to answer fast. And um, so I think that everyone has their style. So someone has this style of I don't know, being like super entertaining during their live streams. Some people, they prepare their live streams. So I think that the best solution would be to stay consistent on your format. Like you have, I don't know, I built a CRUD API in one hour. That's a format. So people say, okay, so maybe I'll, I'll go the next one. So so you can have different uh, styles. Usually live programming is more close to uh, to um, an entertainment thing. So it's not educational. It's more like to have fun. Uh, maybe you have some bugs. So it's uh, closer to a gaming live stream rather than... Uh, being super educational. So that's the goal of pair programming, <clears throat> uh, mm, live programming. Pair programming, I've done pair programming. You know that my, my first live streams that were pair programming is funny, but it's just basically for, it's 80% is for fun. Uh, I'll just focus on the questions related to development and public speaking. Some error. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, yeah, let's focus on the on the public speaking one. Hey, Rajneesh, nice. Um, yes, so let's go back on this uh, main topic. So it's um, I, it has been a while since I started doing public speaking, and I think that uh, public speaking can really help in uh, as a you as a developer. The first reason is that uh, by doing public speaking, you can choose a topic. And then by pre just by preparing a presentation, you will improve uh, in that field. So that's, uh, that's really amazing. And I think that by having to expose something, it's like a, it's a great exercise. Like, I don't know, I want to show you, I don't know, how I built uh, some API on the Lens protocol or a new feature of Next.js or the latest feature, uh, features of Docker. So presenting something is the best way to learn it because uh, if you want if you make a presentation you will understand way more things uh, on that on the topic so 
Okay, and now let's start with the with this one, which I really like, which is uh, um, an introduction. Let's say. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, okay. So about getting started. About getting started. Getting started with public speaking. So usually, when I say public speaking, uh, for me it's uh, <clears throat> for me public speaking is. Um, Talking in speaking in public, so it's not a webinar. So usually, uh, usually I, hey Fabio, Fabio, we have been talking, uh, speaking about you at the conference, like that you you were amazing. It was me and Giorgio, Giorgio Boa. <laughs> so getting started with public speaking, I think the best uh, best solution would be to choose a topic that you are familiar with. For example, I was familiar with Docker, so my first experience, it was a webinar. We about uh, about Docker, so that's that's the best solution. It, you, you don't need a, a big audience, but uh, let's let's divide between webinar and in-person events. Let's say for, so for webinars is um, <clears throat> yeah. Um, so for webinars is uh, mm, it's easier because of course you can do this uh, online. And uh, I will stick to something very simple, and then uh, you can move on. But you you can check uh, what other people do. Sometimes we have this issue, like it's it looks so hard, but once you start, uh, it becomes easier. You understand how to make a presentation, what's your goal, the timing, and and at the end of the day, is um, I think ninety ninety percent is about to making practice. So if you make practice, you will be you will be way way better. <clears throat> uh -huh. Yes, so that's uh, that's it. Yes, yes, Fabio, we have to come back on doing something together for sure. Thank you so much uh, for coming. Yeah, <clears throat> I would like to focus more and just on the the public speaking questions. So this will be full focused on public speaking. So. You can ask about topics, uh, presentation. How do you create the presentation? I want to make a video on this. Like, uh, what's the process? Because I'm a fan of like improving and showing the process. Like, what's the whole process uh, from zero to create the presentation? Yeah, you're welcome. Mm. Trust me, if I can be a public speaker, anyone can be a public speaker. <clears throat> nice. Mm. Amazing, amazing. Ten people. So remember, I'm I'm now going to check uh, the Twitter account. If you share this uh, YouTube live stream, I will share it either on on Twitter and uh, YouTube and um, LinkedIn. I mean, you can also use YouTube. Let's see. Uh, 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 uh. We have also many questions on the on the Twitter one, and yes. I love this one by Arvind. I love this one. How to improve storytelling part in public speaking. So the last presentation I made, it was uh, on purpose to improve my own storytelling because I think I do something that I wanted to improve, it was uh, the story. Storytelling is basically about like creating a story. So seeing the exact same things, but in a story, in a story format. And uh, and so how to improve the storytelling? I think that... Uh, uh, there are there are even like uh, videos or uh, tutorials, but I want to talk about from my personal experience. So, storytelling is about bringing people from from a point to somewhere else. For example, I used the some Back to Future slides, so this is basically it was good like to say, okay, so let's start this uh, time travel. So being very visual, I think that we visuals can really help. It's like uh, visuals in a book for for children. So visuals can really help, like in in the imagination. Like okay, so now we are doing this, and in the whole process. So this can be done with uh, technical visuals or uh, uh, powerful images. So this can really help. And uh, yes, and it and also of course by telling it, you should you can have a good pace and also having this uh, uh, this pace of explaining things uh, like every two, three minutes you say, okay, and now is this, and now is that. So this is very important. So 
you will not lose the people. People want to see what's next. You will always do something. So, you see, so, so to keep people and say, okay, now what's next? And you show slowly something new, something new. And then you have your own final um, conclusions. So that's uh, that was a great one. I don't know what that is. Sure, some tips to make a presentation that is both informative and not boring. Okay, nice. So informative, I think that, so when I create a presentation, I never start from jokes. So the jokes are always at the end. So all the not boring things, they go at the end because I don't want to pollute my own uh, core message with a joke. A joke is there to entertain people, but uh, the message can be even super strong, <laughs> the very powerful. So informative is that I want to, so I think the most important part is to choose your audience. You have to choose who, who you want to talk to because you can't talk to everyone. I don't know. I want to talk only to young developers. I want to talk only to experienced developers. So you should have an audience. Now, does this mean that if you prepare a presentation only for a junior developers, a senior developer will hate that? No, but uh, you should choose uh, who are you talking to. So informative, I think that uh, to be informative, you should have a very good uh, conclusions. Like conclusions should be powerful, like this, this, and that. So having like takeaways. So don't forget to put takeaways. Don't do your presentation and say, okay, it's over. And this is without any conclusion. So put something at the end before the thank you, before the Q&A. This is where people, they get more because uh, they are at the end of your your. Uh, uh, presentation so they can take uh, more not boring uh i put uh, some memes uh, some jokes but not too many like uh, two three four and uh, and it's funny it's funny at the end and, uh, and i think it's also very important how how you say something because if i talk like this and, we talk, and after after two minutes you'll probably leave so instead you should always uh, share your energy your passion about a topic. It's very important. This is uh, <laughs> very, very important. <clears throat> I love this. I love this, Dumte. What was how an introvert can over overcome stage fright? I am, I'm still an, for a strong introvert. I want to be short here because I, I make a presentation about introvert developers on social media. So <laughs> this is a topic that which is very um, important for me. I think that uh, in also introverts can also do something. Otherwise, we would be extinct. We would not get engaged. We would stop doing anything. So it's just about what really matters for you. Because if you... If you're an introvert, but you really want to share something about your your journey, something about uh, a topic, this might be stronger than you being shy. And again, be, being introvert and shy are two different things. Like you can be introvert and shy. You can be introvert, but not shy. Now, now I'm still introvert, but I'm not shy anymore. So you can work on the shyness. You, you can't work much on the being introvert. But let's say usually even... In, First of all, you are not, I think nobody is introvert 100%. And it also, it depends on where you are. Like if you are, if I am at a tech conference where I know that most of the people are developers, usually I tend to talk to people more. So it's more about that. And it's all about getting getting used to that. So, and I want to say something like, uh, I, I've talked to hundreds of speakers none of them said that the second pre presentation was harder than the first one. So the first presentation will be 100% your hardest one. So it's all downhill from there. It's all about getting started. <laughs> nice. Madhu, as a public speaker, what what do you find be the most common mistakes that speakers make and how can they be able... Okay, so I don't have a list, but I should. First, speak too fast that's uh, that's probably the the strongest like speak too fast is the number one sometimes i think i also spoke too fast at the beginning 
sometimes during live streams is different because here I'm talking like to friends. When you're doing a presentation, slow your down pace because you will look more confident. You can take your comp, especially if you're a non-native speaker, you will sound clearer. There's absolutely no reason to to don't slow down. So that's a, ah okay. Another mistake: assuming things. I assume that you know what Docker Compose is, so I just show a Docker Compose file out of nowhere. I can do this maybe at DockerCon, but you should not assume that people know things, or even worse, uh, uh, assuming that people know acronyms. I don't know, uh, uh, some, something. So don't assume things. Assume that you are talking to six years old people who know absolutely nothing. So these are the ready two. Something else, don't, uh, a third one, don't, uh, you don't, don't introduce yourself. You don't put uh, like your handle, uh, like where people can follow you. Like uh, you don't introduce yourself, like, uh, or you don't give like a clear call to action. Like if you want, you can follow me there. You can do there. So these are like a little three mistakes. Good, good for a short. <laughs> How do you manage your presentation? Is there a time limit? Five versus ten can be thirty minutes. Jokes, more content if there is time. And there are different uh, timing for presentations. It's not uh, science of <laughs> jokes. Uh, science. Um, it's not a must. So I don't force it. If I find something that might be uh, funny, I do it, and uh, and that's it. So I don't. I absolutely don't force it. I had uh, in the last presentation, I think a three or four interesting things but uh, on purpose i don't i don't put too many because uh things that should be like this should stimulate curiosity of people like saying like okay maybe at, at the next slide we'll have some because if you put something funny on every slide which slide after four slides people already expect something so random but uh let's say at a good pace and nice thank you arvin Uh, this is an amazing one, Sumit Kumar. Please suggest some platforms where to submit uh, talks. So one platform is Sessionize. You can check that. It's a very powerful platform. It's a platform for speakers. So this is what I know. Maybe there are more, but uh, for now I just suggest this one because that was the one I know. So Sessionize. Let me find it. This is not sponsored, by the way. It's just uh, Sessionize.com. Okay. Okay. Nice. So this is one of the platforms, of course. Uh, yeah, I'm focused just on the questions about uh, development and public speaking. So I'm not. Uh, I'm not answer to other questions, and not spam, please. Um, when are you coming to to India? In eleven days. <laughs> So <laughs> that was easy. And um, and uh, yes, so see you there. I will be in Goa. <clears throat> I do what most times forget my lines. That is what I plan to present immediately as I get on stage. How can I overcome this depressive challenge? I've tried all therapies, but I'm not in sim. Okay, so I'm super bad at memorizing things. So you are in the right place, don't you? Because I'm so bad at memorizing things that I had to learn math. <laughs> Not jokes. Like uh, for me, memorizing something is absolutely impossible. If I speak for more than one minute looking straight at the camera, I'm using the teleprompter and reading. There is absolutely no chance for me to remember things. So I'll tell you what I do. Do you remember that I told you that uh, I usually start my presentation creating a doc? So a, do a documentation, a doc, uh, um, document. So I have the introduction, I have the main part, and I have the conclusion. Let's say these three main parts. Then what I do, I literally put all the text on different slides. So the slides look horrible. The slides look like uh, on black and white uh, with all this text. So it's, uh, it's horrible. But uh, then it's an iterative process of me reading the slides and then going on the next one, on the next one. Then I start, start to remove some words. I start to, if there is too much text on a slide, I break them in two, only three slides. So 
I have this process that, and at the end I have a presentation which like you know, like 50 slides but I work iteratively. It's like continuous integration on a presentation. So it's DevOps applied to presentations and it works. At the end, I start also to highlight some keywords. I've done this in the last presentation. I'd send this presentation on my next newsletter and, and that's it. So, and I always prefer to have more text on the slide rather than forgetting something. So if I forget about something, keep I just add one line, maybe at the uh, the bottom of of a slide. That's also a nice trick. Like you can add something at the very bottom. And, uh, and yes, that's it. But uh, I am with you. I'm super bad at memory. Like I, I invite people who can memorize more than uh, three lines. <laughs> I can't. Okay. <clears throat> and now, uh, what is the journey exactly from building some personal projects to start speaking in tech? It's interesting. Journey from building personal project to start speaking in tech conferences. So you can achieve uh, speaking at conferences in different ways. So I'll tell you what worked for me. For me, it worked to work on the social media presence and content creation. So I've been contacted by the We Are Developers Conference, which is a huge conference, uh, probably because of a mix of content creation and social media presence. So um Building personal projects, it's usually not enough. You should work on, you can have, let's say, I think there are two main paths. One is to uh, have this career of, of public speaker. So you just focus on pub, on speaking at your, uh, your in-person events, local meetups, which I didn't do. The other one is to focus on social media. So social media, webinars, and then conferences. So I pursued this uh, second the second path and uh, there is a lot of work daily work and uh, but uh, i really really wish you best of luck anant if you want uh, to pursue this career i think it's fascinating and it's uh, as you said less uh, boring than uh, just coding at home so it's uh, it's interesting i'm i'm very happy to have pursued this uh, this thing mm -hmm. so Okay, so this is not 100% related to public speaking, but it's related in some ways. Um, what do you do on a daily basis as a developer advocate? So I, I have a series on my YouTube channel, which is called DevRel Unlocked. So you can check that. So DevRel on my, my YouTube channel. Um, try it out. Uh, developer advocacy, it's a word. And uh, it's, um, I, in a daily basis, I do many different things. One is to organizing events. For the dev, I do two monthly two monthly events. Then I handle the social media. I create three short videos multiplied four platforms, so it's twelve videos per week. And what else? <clears throat> like in person events, and uh, and also, for example, when there is a new feature, I support a new feature. For example, we have this new feature of squads in the dev. Many different things. Uh, being a developer advocate is to handle different types of jobs, basically. And that's it. Let's go on the next one. Pedica. I see many people from LinkedIn today. I like it. Mm. Uh, so sometimes I do, um, I do this on um, just on YouTube. So I'm going to drop the link of uh, YouTube. I don't know if you see this. Uh, on LinkedIn, probably not. So if I go on LinkedIn, I'm sorry, but I want to check because I see I see many people here are from LinkedIn. So, a moment. Uh, developers. Okay, a moment. Let me check. <clears throat> oh wow. So, okay. So okay. So this is the, um, the YouTube link. I see. Okay, I see people here on LinkedIn. Amazing. Cool. Fail to post the comment. Why? Uh, one sec. Mm -hmm. But you can check my. You can check me at uh, um, Francesco Ciulla on YouTube. No, I can't. Okay, I can't share a link. Okay, nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So, how did you give your first presentation related to 
to your any tech projects? I mean, to, to ask, how did you start? Mm, okay, so this is a nice one. So I created the, uh, my first presentation was about a, was a technical one, which was introduction to blockchain, introduction to Solidity, but it was more introduction to blockchain. So I started work, working and learning about uh, blockchain technologies uh, seriously, let's say at the end of 2021. And I started doing this on a daily basis. So my first presentation was basically everything I, th I learned about uh, blockchain in six months, but like on a daily basis. So, um, so this is how I started. I gave your first presentation related to your tech projects. My tech project was like some a project called Free Web3 uh, Resources, a Free Web3 project. It's also uh, on uh, GitHub, more than 20,000 stars. And, uh, and so this is how I started. So by doing something that I like and with uh, about this uh, technical topic. This was um, for an in-person event. The first webinar was about Docker. So these are like the two main topics uh, I talk about usually are uh, Docker and blockchain technologies. <clears throat> I'll also be at the DockerCon in October in Los Angeles. I'll have a presentation about Docker in September. I'll do a presentation about uh, blockchain technologies in India in uh, less than two weeks. That's it. So, uh, so yes, nice. Amazing, perfect. <clears throat> uh, we, hi. <laughs> nice, thank you so much for dropping by. <clears throat> Good to go. Yeah. Oh, I love this. Uh, how do you get your first invitation? How can one grow up and start speaking on conferences? Okay, so I'll, I really want to, to talk about this because I see many people and I think for everyone, the real, real issue is to get started. Because once you start getting invited at uh, conferences, it's uh, 10 times easier because people already know you. So first invitation for the conference. I got my first invitation for the conference in an email. So it was an email of the We Are Developers conference. And someone invited me, like, Francesco, we are the We Are Developers Conference. We would like to have you as a speaker. So this was, uh, I think it was uh, February 2022. February or March? No, February 2022. So I got invited as a speaker. And uh, so I didn't, I didn't have to look actively for that. So I really did many live streams, uh, webinars, but never an in-person event. Okay. So... How can one grab and start speaking at conferences? I think the best way is to showcase stuff. So doing webinars, uh, uh, doing videos uh, about different topics, uh, empower your social media presence, uh, empower your community. So this is, uh, this is the best way. So, and then of course you can apply, but like everybody is applying. So you can try to have this uh, on with a different, uh, in a different way. I am a, I don't know if what I say is for everyone because usually I never look for things. I never look for jobs. I never apply for, I usually never apply for conferences. I don't act, I don't send CVs. So this is working for me because I'm very focused on trying to provide as much value as possible. So I don't know if this would work for you. I, I will not be here saying like, don't send your CV, don't send your CFP. No, I just think that in the meanwhile, you should focus on showcasing things because if you get a company reaching at you for first then you'll probably get your your accommodation paid your travel paid and everything else otherwise uh, maybe you can end up maybe paying for your travels or other stuff so and if a company doesn't pay you and it's a paid company a paid uh, conference it's a red flag for me Will having a strong open source profile with a social media presence helping getting such speaking opportunities? 100%, Anant, especially social media. You don't need to be a social media monster. Like I'm not a social media monster. I have some followers. I had. I think that when I got invited, I got uh, 50, 50K on Twitter, 50K on Twitter. Let's say if you want to talk about mere numbers, which just doesn't make much sense. So strong media, social media presence, it's, uh, it's powerful, but not just because the number of followers. It's also because if you have, if you stay some time on one single social media, it can be LinkedIn, by the way, you will have more people knowing you. 
So it's about, maybe it's more about like people inviting you because they know you. So it's not just about the mere number of followers, which might, number of followers are good for just maybe, if you don't, I don't know you, and I see that you have 1 million subscribers on YouTube, it means, okay, so maybe Anant has done something cool on YouTube, for sure. Uh, so that's uh, the only the only thing. But uh, this means nothing. You maybe built your audience uh, with cards or gaming or makeup, which has nothing to do with development. So that's the only the first, the only the first impression. But uh, for sure, social media presence can really, really uh, help. Uh, this event is 100% free, so if you can drop a like to help with the algorithm on YouTube, especially this, since this is a um, ninja, almost ninja live stream, <laughs> I done this like two hours ago, and yes, uh, nice, nice, nice. <clears throat> ah, perfect. Thank you so much, Vedika, for uh, for ah, okay, perfect. Thank you for uh, for sharing on Twitter. I'm re retweeting everything. Thank you. So you just have to take the link of the event, tag me on Twitter, and I'll reshare it. So we also get uh, this reshared. Perfect. Uh, okay. Nice. 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 Perfect. Nice. Ah, I really missed doing the streams. <laughs> How is the audio? If I put like this, it's better. This is like a podcast for a version. But maybe you, you can fall asleep if I talk like this. What do you think? Is it better or not? <laughs> um, let's see. <laughs> yeah. I look a bit hungry. But let's see. Nice. Okay, nice, nice. So more questions, more questions. I have some questions maybe from Twitter. So I'll also maybe answer some of them here now. Uh, I want to make a poll like uh, uh, what's uh, your experience in public speaking in person uh, done many done one never never tried so far so you see during my live stream, I ask for feedback. So in person, usually it's better because uh, you can see people raising their hand. Here is a bit more indirect, indirect, but uh, yes, nice. So I'm gonna check also LinkedIn. I don't know if on LinkedIn you can share an event. I think you can. Let's see. Oh, okay. Comment on your post, nice. <laughs> Nice. Let's see, Madhu. <clears throat> In your opinion, what element contribute most significantly to a successful speech or presentation? And how can our community members incorporate this principle into their own public speaking? So the goal of, I think that uh, a successful speech, so a successful speech is a, is a speech that uh, provokes something. It can be a call to action. It can be, I don't know, to sign up somewhere. So people should do something after your speech. I don't know. Uh, make your first uh, open source contribution or uh, uh, try to post uh, one uh, video, even if you're scared. So this is where a uh, presentation has uh, um, uh, is successful. This is my opinion. So I'm talking more as a, as a goal. So for example, my last presentation was about like uh, trying to innovate to find uh, some ideas, uh, and especially if you are frustrated about something in development and try to create something new. So that was the that was the the goal of the presentation. So if out of two thousand people we get one person innovating, or because of this presentation, it would be one hundred percent worth. So that's uh, that's that that's the goal. Yes. So giving a giving the right message and making people do action, do something. So that's... Mm -hmm. I, get to, I, I don't know if this is related to public speaking, getting nervous. Uh, I was also very nervous. 
I never thought that I could. Okay, in 2017, I was even too scared to attend the conferences, not uh, not be a speaker. <laughs> so <laughs> this is me in 2017. 2018, I attended my first conference. 2019, I attended another conference. It was a conference in Rome. 2020, I had the ticket, but there was COVID, so no, no in-person event. And 2022, it was my first conference as a speaker. I also attended a couple of meetups. So if this nervous is about public speaking, uh, we get nervous for many different things. We get nervous for playing some sport matches. We got nervous you know, for any performance. We get nervous for any exam, any exam of our life. It can be our thesis. It can be our license driving. <laughs> and uh, life is all about uh, exams uh, and something like that. So we should get used to this. But usually we can try to fight this anxiety with logic. Because, uh, like, for example, like, I, I had some, I had, I really had some experience. But even me, like, when, when I saw the crowd and the room of almost 4,000 people, I said, okay, so I'm, I, I'm screwed. <laughs> because, uh, this, uh, this room is too, is too big. It was big even for me. I'm, I'm not used to this uh, such kind of audience. But then I thought, okay, but uh, this is just in my head because uh, what if this room had just uh, three, three chairs? So it's, uh, it's a mental block that we create in our brain because our brain is powerful and can create things. So this is where uh, being nervous uh, happens. But uh, we should... I already said this today in a Twitter space. So we should stop focusing on just ourselves and, and focusing on, on our ego. Say, so, okay, it's all about ourselves getting nervous. No, we should shift the attention on the audience. We are doing something, we are not there for, for to, to brag or to show that we are we are cool. We are there to try to help someone, to try to get, send a message. And this has two effects. The first one is that we focus on the right thing. We focus on trying to help someone who is new. And the second one is that we shift our focus from our brain and our blocks to somewhere else. So now we're doing this not for us, but we're doing this for someone else. And this really helps, at least for me, it really helps my anxiety because I stop being nervous. Because if I have to do if I have to give this presentation to help someone in the audience, someone who is young, who is a junior developer, I stop being nervous because uh, the focus is no more on me. It's not about me. It's not about Francesco. It's about trying to provide something for someone else. And this helps immensely from a, mm, from an anxiety perspective. So this is a trick. Hey, Manish, I see that you are on LinkedIn <coughs> today. Okay, if you would like to suggest anybody a beginner level project on what would you suggest? So uh, this is would be should be more related to public speaking. So I'll give an, an answer on uh, beginner project uh, on uh, uh, that you can also create a presentation on it. So I will go on something related to even AI or some evergreen stuff. So something which is really evergreen, like I don't know. You're starting learning React, or you want to create something with AI. I mean, for example, OpenAI API, I think it's a good way. So this is what I would recommend. So any project might work, and uh, it should, I think that uh, you should try to add something. I don't know. Uh, I've been a volleyball coach. I can put, create, I don't know, a website uh, or a project about volleyball. So something which is uh, specific to you. I don't know which are your hobbies, uh, your things, even outside the tech. Uh, food is great, even if you can get a bit hungry <laughs> by coding it. So, yeah, so something more about you. Make it a bit personal using maybe something about your life. I think that would be a good one. By the way, planning to speak at Google IU extended organized by local Google Developer Group. It's kind of first time. That's amazing. That's really amazing. Co car carried or cared. And, uh, and yes, you can also, you can get a lot of experience uh, because there are many things that you understand only after doing public speaking. So it can be, I don't know, uh, that there is something called clicker to, to change slide or how the microphone 
is used uh, um, something else uh, you understand it the presentation will have a beginning an end uh, the q a session uh, engage with people giving some stickers at the end so it's not just about the talk itself but there are many many things uh, around around this so best of luck don't forget of course to share something on social media about this because it's a, it's a hack you can grow on social media by showcasing your conferences thank you thank you so much uh, rosario i think you are italian hello hello man interesting talk yes this is so, i really wanted to make this a live stream because uh, i'm still uh, like fresh from this cast just came back from uh, from this uh, platform i already gave one which is the session eyes let's see session eyes this is the only platform i know it's not sponsored but it's um it's uh, that one okay nice 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 let's see let's see hmm. Are getting something I see. Hmm. so i we have this um yeah try this uh, session eyes create a profile and you can apply or you can apply on the single websites of the single uh, conferences so you should start connecting with people working at conferences uh, and so on <laughs> okay i hope you can hear me amazing so i'm doing this um, poll on youtube what's your experience in public speaking in person and 30 percent done with that has done many presentations 10 percent one and 60 percent have never tried the public speaking to be honest 30 percent done many it's uh, it's good good uh we have also antonella ciao <laughs> I don't know if you can hear me. I don't know if you are from the PC or, or the the phone. And so this is uh, um, I can still I can still stay for a while. So as soon as we will have uh, some questions, I will stay. And uh, that's it. It has been a while for me. Mm -mm -mm. Already one hour. No, oh, I'm blowing. Mind blowing. <clears throat> <laughs> I don't know because I'm not an extrovert. I still hate the parties uh, and all the stuff. I can go to a party, but it doesn't mean that I hate it. Like I code in JavaScript, but I hate it. So, <laughs> um, Manish uh, trolling me now because there is this uh, people think that like you become an extrovert. No, I still uh, lose energy by doing all these sort of events. I lose energy by going to parties uh, i lose energy doing twitter spaces but i'm trained now so i'm i'm a, i'm a trained introvert which is super powerful because introverts have so powerful uh skills but uh, i'm still the same <laughs> nice <clears throat> okay nice nice reply to the poll I'm gonna check on Twitter. If you share the the, the live stream, uh, I'm gonna retweet it. Just share the link, but tag me. Okay. That's it. Let's see. Mentions. Let's see if I get something else. Not yet. My amazing, amazing, amazing. Mm. Oh, it has been cool. It has been really, really cool. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Let's end this poll. Mm -hmm. I've been to a party when I went to Goa, so it's not that I can't. I just uh, lose energy, but uh, you also lose energy when you go for a run. This doesn't stop you from doing it. <clears throat> no, because it's in the way you recharge. An extrovert will feel alone at home. I feel great when there is nobody around. <laughs> so, so this is not changing at all. <laughs> I, when I'm alone at home, I recharge. I go in recharge mode. An extrovert will probably feel alone and feel feel uh, bad staying alone with himself, with themselves. For me, no. <laughs> I still love it. 
<laughs> but I mean, I can go to parties. Um, okay, so uh, I will share the presentation in the next uh, newsletter. So probably at some point I will also share um, share the link. You can. Uh, I'm I'm actively active mostly on uh, Twitter X or whatever. Twitter and uh, YouTube. So if you are here from LinkedIn, you can also check uh, check me on uh, on Twitter. And yes, I really wanted to do uh, something for for you because uh, I have to say something that uh, I would not be here like without the support of the developers community. Everything that happened on social media. So I really have to say a big big thank you for supporting me what I've done uh, so far. If you ever interacted, make a collaboration of any kind, I think that the secret of social media is also to collaborate with everyone. So don't just focus on yourself, but try to collaborate with someone else. Uh, if they invite you to podcast and also and all, all stuff like that, I always try to, to come. So if you invite me on some uh, space or uh, podcast, the only thing that maybe you should do this with some advance, a couple of weeks, but yes. Um, yeah. <clears throat> yes. And so, so again, this uh, live stream is focused on uh, developers and public speaking. If we want to do one uh, focused about just the development, we should do something else. So uh, I want to say something. Usually on YouTube, I'm very community driven. What does it mean? That I ask, like, what do you want me to do? What do you want to have? What do you want to see? So I see, for example, many questions about development. I will not answer to them in this live stream because it's focused on public speaking for developers, but you can follow on YouTube, support this live stream. It's very, very important to support this type of content so I can keep doing it. Okay. So like this video, share the video, interact because I make polls like, what do you want to see next? What do you want me to talk about? Uh, you can always ask me questions, but don't ask them in private or in DMs. Usually I never reply. You should go on open. I do open uh, spaces. I do live streams on YouTube and you can literally ask me anything. So that's, uh, that's it. It's not that I don't want to answer. It's uh, I want to focus on things at the right time. So I hope that you understand. <clears throat> yeah. And I do also different types of content. I do DevRel, DevRel Roundtable. I talk about DevRel. I talk about technical stuff. So I do many, many things, uh, but you should you should really focus on the right thing at the right at the right moment. So it's very important. Thank you so much for leaving another like. And let's see. I can still stay as soon as there will be questions, I will be here. Otherwise, I'll just close the stream. So if you want a tier, you have another profile picture here. I hate you. <laughs> we are friends. And Tia saying hiya. So that's uh, that's uh, personal branding. I'm not closing. I was about to close, but if you drop a question, I will still stay. So if you want me to stay here, you should drop any question related to public speaking and developers, of course. It's an old one. Yes, I know, I know. <laughs> With glasses, but uh, it's okay, it's okay. I have also different profile pictures uh, on um, on the YouTube, I think I have an old one. I mean, I think nice, nice. So it has been a while, almost 10 days without a live stream. It's a negative record now. <laughs> I've been a bit busy because I had to prepare the presentation and now I went to to Berlin and now I'm back. So probably soon I'll also go for a walk, for a run. But before that, uh, I really wanted to take some time to answer, to answer people. So yes. Thank you so much, Carlos. I was not sure if I should have done this uh, or not, but uh, usually... As you can see, if you do a AMA sessions, uh, they tend to be a bit too wide. But if you focus on one topic, I think they can still be mm, good, let's say, for someone. I can also take some parts and turn them maybe into a short video or whatever. <laughs> nice. Yes. 
Okay, nice. So thank, uh, so thank uh, Rajnish. So I'll stay uh, some more time. So as soon as if uh, as soon as I get questions, I'll stay. So that's it. Time management before the presentation. Uh, do you mean uh, about uh, um, preparing the presentation or right before, like the day before the conference? So I'll answer for the for the right before the right before the presentation so not during the preparation but let's say you already get your flight so so time management i usually when i go to to a conference the slides are already done and i just want to, to um practice so usually i practice uh, many many times because if a presentation is 20 minutes like in two hours you can make make it like four or five you can do these three, four times. It's already a lot. The day before, I always make practice. The same day, I also make practice. So I keep repeating. And I always, always check how much time does it take to make the presentation. So I'll show you. You can use whenever tool you want. I use the simple. You, you see, this is the um, me on the last try on the presentation. So it was a 25 uh, um uh, minutes. The presentation was still 23, but uh, I managed to, to do it on time. I had to cut this a bit, but uh, but yes. So so this is the this is something that I absolutely recommend because if you don't measure how much time does it take, you will probably overrun. So uh, <laughs> uh, I think that you should try. Uh, so this is a really off topic. Yeah, <laughs> other time. I'm sorry, um, but I I have some. I have some. I have some. <clears throat> but with some pizza, it's vegetarian. You can try pizza with uh, zucchini, like pizza with vegetables. <laughs> I really admire your multitasking. Yeah, you know that uh, I really uh, thank you because uh, I like to do many things. And it's not easy at all. So managing different things, it's not easy at all. But I really like it. So I like to make staying active on um, Twitter. I have enough things. <clears throat> OK, OK. Now, there are many. There are many. Yeah, hard, I would say impossible. I can't remember a, a thing. Like, if you ask me, like my presentation, like without the slides, the support, I, I literally remember almost nothing. So it's uh, yes, that's it. That's it. You have posts pending. Yes. <clears throat> so what else? Uh, Okay, I want to share something about content creation and public speaking because I think that public speaking can also be turned into uh, more content. For example, you can make a video of you recording you making the whole presentation or you can, like what I'm doing now, like you can create content around your presentation. You can make a space on the topic. You can uh, make shorts on the topic. You can make some tweets. So. Having a presentation, it's really powerful because it, then you can break it into more types of content. So you can, in a sort of way, recycle your content. So that's uh, that's great. And and also the opposite. You can also do the opposite. You can prepare your presentation by making some events. I don't know. Let's say that I want to make a presentation about React. You can pre make some spaces, like some weeks before, some months before, with on some topics. So you can invite some people, you can ask them something, and you can get some information, and then you can get some ideas on these uh, topics. So yeah, Con presentations and content creation, they really go hand in hand. The only problem is that when you go on conferences, uh, it's a bit harder to record videos, and that's the only thing. So that's the, the thing. Mm -mm. Uh, mm, mm. What tools do you use for? Oh, this is a great. What tools do you use for filming, like for in-person events, uh, travel, and for your technical content? So, I I I miss the. So I went with this camera on the uh, the last conference. I still don't have uh, a proper microphone you can use uh, uh, 
um, during the in-person events, but I'll buy one at, at some point. And, uh, and, and I use the same one. So one day, I promise, Tia, one day I'll make a thread uh, on Twitter or uh, I'll share everything about my setup. It's, that, uh, it's on my to-do list that's been there for a while. The ring light, uh, the, this uh, microphone, uh, the amplifier. I'll share everything about that. I made my presentation in Canva. So that's uh, probably it's not the best tool in the world. It's good if you're not a designer. The only problem with Canva is that uh, the, the PowerPoint uh, it creates, it's awful. So I made this presentation in PDF, for example. Camera or stands? Um, what do you mean by stand? Like, no, uh, yes, I use the tripod. You mean like as a stand and uh, or something else? Spaces are best. I agree. I made a space today, yes. So, yes, so... But I mean, we can talk all day long about all the technical stuff, uh, but uh, for public speaking, I think the only good thing is that uh, is having a personal clicker. I don't have it uh, here, but like uh, a clicker, so it's something that you can use to, to switch slides. It's great. Anything? Tripods, yeah, I have many. I have many. I have uh, one for the phone. I'll share everything. So <laughs> yeah, I know this, like I have so many uh, tools now that I have to probably make a whole video on this. And in film as well. So yes, I agree with this. Yes, yes, yes. Let's uh, try to focus a bit more on public speaking. And uh, yes. Yeah, space uh, is the thing. For, like, if you have nothing, you can still make a space. Thread on threads, threads, still threads of things. But yes, it's on my, my to-do list. And uh, I think uh, that uh, if you don't have a current uh, uh, concrete option to do public speaking in person, keep doing things online can help for sure. So making Twitter spaces, live stream events, uh, uh, whatever, even just videos, uh, oh, all the interactions uh, can really really help like what i'm doing now i'm answering your questions usually at the end of your presentations you have some questions so ans by answering questions you will improve in public speaking now it's not exactly because i'm i'm standing i don't have this microphone it's not exactly the same perception but it's similar so the more you answer questions the more you will improve this is something that for sure you can do today even you don't have to wait for that email uh, that will invite you to public speaking to start doing something. That's uh, important. I'll do, I'll do a little promo. Permission, Francesco? No, Tia. You can't, uh, you can't uh, plug your stuff here. You're absolutely, unless you make a shout out on social media on the live stream. So, you, sh you should make your plug and then share this live stream so people can join. Or you can make the plug before and then share it. <clears throat> nice, nice. Let me check uh, on X. So, mm -hmm. nice. Uh, nice, nice. So, Anant, thank you so much for... Uh, for uh, for this uh, i'm retweeting thank you so much uh, rajneesh uh, yeah this is great i think this is not just uh, in this in this live stream like if you want to support a person because otherwise it's just always the same <laughs> for, for 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 people so just sharing it's a great sign um do we have to answer the questions accurately what to do when we don't have more knowledge about it how can you how can you answer accurately if you don't have any more knowledge? So I already replied to this in a Twitter space. Uh, authenticity is more important than, try, than trying to be accurate. You're, you're not in an interview. So if I ask you something specific, 
you can tell what you know. Let's say, I don't know. I know that uh, using this technology, you can achieve this. With this version 12.3, I don't know if they changed something. I know this, and that's my knowledge. I suggest if you're not sure, you can say, I can check it and we can keep in touch. So I'll give you an answer later. Authenticity, it's on top of my priority when we have, I don't want to give like uh, wrong wrong answers. Yes. The f you know, something funny. The first question I ever got, I didn't have a clear answer. It was uh, very technical and it was um, a bit like, what if we do that? And I said, I don't know what happened. This was my first question they ever got on a stage. That's it. Yeah, I don't care. It's uh, we should, But if we have the answer, it's good to reply. But uh, uh, not being able... It's absolutely normal. You you can't know everything. You can't know ev more than everyone on the stage, on the on the audience. So the ad came up. Ah, there is an ad. I don't know. I just uh, I just put the. Maybe I should disable it. I don't know. Let me check. No, because I don't know. It's uh, let me put live chat replay. Monetization. Oh, I just gonna say everything. I wish. I wish. I did. So I removed the. Um, I removed the the ads. Nicely explained. So I removed the ads. No, to, no, you know what? The the problem is that when you have ads, YouTube promotes your video more. It's not that I want to become rich with ads. I want the video to reach more people. So now I tried to remove the ads. So let's see how does it work. So this is Eddie with a, an, um, an old profile picture. Or maybe it's new. I don't know. But it's not the usual one. Francesco knows everything. I wish. I wish, Eddie. I wish. I could give uh, the cure of cancer. <laughs> um, the ad for me. Uh, I removed it. I'm sorry, but uh, it's just. They promised for a special host after two hours. Just inviting you all. I'm, uh, yes, I think I'll, I think I'll come. I don't know if I'll go for a run or walk, because so probably I'll join while walking. But yes. Nice. You know, I don't know, Eddie, you always look super young to me. You are uh, ageless for me, Eddie. You are uh, you are too good. So, I don't know. Everyone with a different profile picture. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Egg banger. Uh, I can't make it. You are going out soon. Eddie is always moving, always doing stuff. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. So, I'm really, really enjoying these uh, sort of uh, live streams. I don't know if I should take some parts and maybe I can turn this into some short, uh, short videos or I should remove it, uh, but uh, it's going well. <laughs> <laughs> nice, 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 nice. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. Eddie, I don't know, I don't know when we will, we, we will meet because I think we are going at different conferences. I had to cancel the InfoBeep Shift conference. I'm so sad because I have to go to the Daily Dev uh, company gathering. It, I was already confirmed. So bad. I, lo I love Croatia. I will have FOMO, Eddie. <laughs> I already know that. But, uh, but yes. <clears throat> Eddie is a great guy when it comes to open source, even in other fields. But yes, absolutely. Uh, yes, Francesco is the liveliness of technical events. Yes. Uh, why are you sad? When we will meet? Uh, Thea, I'm coming to India and you're not coming. I'm coming to London and you're not coming. So do you want to tell me something? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I wish. Nice. So, uh, so again, uh, this was a live stream that uh, it was really focused on public speaking and, and development. I went a bit out of topic, but if you still have a question, anything you want about uh, how you can improve, 
if you have uh, any problems, any issue with your presentation, with your finding the topics, uh, uh, finding a conference, uh, or maybe you've been invited but you declined it because you were too uh, too shy, uh, I'm here. So if you want, uh, feel free to drop all your questions uh, and, uh, and that's it. I think that conferences uh, is, uh, yeah, I'm doing my best yeah, to meet you. It's your fault. <laughs> um, I think at conference, I want to share something about conferences and my previous job. So in my previous job, I was a volleyball coach. So I was working in sports. So we were used to do in this crowded in-person events or so these games. Uh, and I don't know why. Maybe this is why I like conferences. I like conferences because it looks so similar to a sport match, a sport event, rather than just sitting at home coding. So I don't know, probably I'm attracted by these, uh, these in-person events, even if I'm very shy. So I was doing, I was going there, but it was different because uh, it was, uh, I, you don't have to like to uh, make a talk like in a, in a sport event, but these uh, conferences, especially the last one, it really looked like a sport match. I don't know if you saw, they also made this code 100 thing that uh, really, um, when I saw people like cheering and shouting because someone won the first prize. So this is probably one of the reasons why I, I like uh, uh, in-person events so much. So yes, so for next live streams, I think I'll remove the ads. The problem is that if I remove the ads, I need even more support. Because otherwise, YouTube, they will not show my live stream. I don't know if Eddie, if you are still there, if you leave the ads for live streams. Because for me, it's just that I want the video to be a bit pushed, pushed by the, the YouTube algorithm, and uh, and that's it. So, so yes, that's it. That's it. Really, really enjoying this uh, this uh, live stream. I missed I missed live streams and content creation so bad that I really, really wanted to to come back on this. Nice, nice, nice. Um, Feel free to go, feel free to go, Thea. And yes, yes, this was a very um, spontaneous <laughs> thing we can say. And yes, so if we want me to do something more similar to this, uh, maybe we can have uh, different topics uh, because I do different things. So we can have different topics. Uh, you can come prepared. You can come with all your questions because I see people, they keep uh, sending DMs sending uh, or in, in the comments uh, it's more rare but like many people they ask something in dms um if i use all this the time i could do like 10 live streams so i wanted to focus more on giving the answer to as many people as possible yes i want to answer to this first why do you why do you care create con so this is a uh, this is great and it's it's connected to the public speaking so i can reply so <clears throat> For all my life, uh, I've been a teacher uh, because, uh, first of all, bo both of my parents are teachers. One is a math teacher, one is a physical, uh, let's say, yeah, a personal train. Let's say it's a g gym uh, instructor, my father. So I've always been in a teaching family, <laughs> the family of teachers. So when I started creating, uh, being a developer, I stopped uh, teaching. I was was teaching, uh, I was a volleyball coach, but I was also teaching math, physics, and chemistry at high school and also university. So, yeah, yeah, I got it. So when I created my first piece of content and I was a developer, I said, okay, so I can share my knowledge. This is my teaching now. I felt like I, as a teacher again. So it's not for getting followers or other stuff. For me, creating content is a way to teach, to, to teach now. Now that I, I know this, I have teaching DNA. <laughs> so I create content because I like to teach. That's the first reason. Then this brought me so many good things like some followers, the real position, public speaking, and everything, uh, something like that. So I create content because I like to share what I know. This is uh, something that I will do even with less followers, even with less followers or less uh, or without all these opportunities. This probably is a hack for me because I like it so much and I do this uh, so um, passionately that uh, that probably someone like this. Thank you. Thank you so much, Surab. So 
if you so if you want more sessions like this uh, you can share the channel you can check the videos on the channel i have a series of podcasts on 199 episodes i'm looking for the 200 episode but i want this to be a bit special so i will, I will wait a bit more i have the devrel roundtable i have the technical content on the web development and also blockchain uh, uh, stuff i have a whole series about docker and many many other types of videos also some old videos of me running around rome talking about running i think now i'll go for a run thank you so much for coming me <laughs> for coming here if you if you type something in the chat i'm gonna take a screenshot now so do it now so because i'll make a a, a post soon so feel free to drop your uh, your buy or whatever so you will you will appear <laughs> in the in the final post and, uh, and yes, thank you so much for coming. This was uh, really funny for me. I really missed uh, live streams so much. And I really wanted to, to come back, come back here. So nice, 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 nice. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, yes, yes. Nice, nice. Drop it, drop it. More, more. <laughs> Nice, nice, nice. Really, really, I really, really love doing my these live streams. I would like to do more. <clears throat> these are all good, all good, but maybe it might become something. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. The channel is a gem. Nice, Manish, you are a gem. And thank you. Yes. I do multiple events also on uh, on LinkedIn, but you can check my YouTube channel if you want more. Yeah, sadly, streamer does this strange stuff. And yes, nice. Okay, perfect. Ah. I don't have the the bot here. Yes. Okay. One second. Let me see here. And this one, this channel is a gem, so I want to highlight this one. <laughs> okay, nice. Manish, you are on the on Twitter. X, whatever. Uh, it's a wrap. Great live stream, and finally back to content. The problem with conferences is that uh, I, I slow down a bit on content, but I'll be back. No worries. No worries. No worries. Uh -huh. Shout out to Manish. Uh, Manish. Okay. Let's like this. Okay. Nice. 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 <clears throat> bye bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Bye-bye.